Last month, a row broke out in RTE over the pay gap between men and women working at the station. This comes following announcements of exorbitant salaries for their top presenters. In this week's episode, I take a look at RTE, the high salaries and why people have lost trust in our public service broadcaster. RTE first began broadcasting TV in 1961, despite reluctance from the then President Eamon de Valera. The semi-state body is financed through both the TV licence fee and commercial revenue. In 2016, commercial revenue amounted to 158.2 million euros, while the TV licence revenue was 179.1 million. The numbers of people avoiding to pay their TV licence is much higher in Ireland than in other countries. In Ireland, 14% of us are not paying the TV licence fee, compared to 5% in the UK and 2% in Germany. So why are so many Irish people choosing not to pay their TV licence? A recent study by CensusWide showed that over half of under 30s are planning to cease payment of their TV licence in favour of online streaming such as Netflix and Amazon Prime. This has led to calls for a change in the TV licence to a so-called broadcasting licence. However, 60% of Irish people are against such a move. Secondly, many people simply can't afford to pay. Despite the talk of recovery, people's incomes have not returned following the crash, while the cost of living has increased dramatically. Thirdly, do people feel that RTE gives them good value for money? A recent poll on the independent.ie website showed that 91% of people would rather lose RTE channels than pay an increased TV licence fee. One reason for this could be the advertising. In other countries, the public service broadcasting is advertisement free in the interest of the public. Another reason may be the extortionate salaries paid to the top presenters in RTE. Some of the top 10 salaries include Ryan Tuberty on €495,000, Ray Darcy on 400000 Joe Duffy on 389,988 and Miriam O'Callaghan on 299,000. But high salaries are not just for presenters. Former Director General Noel Curran earned 250,000 euro a year. The culture of high salaries is unlikely to change in the coming period. The new Director General, D. Forbes, comes from a private network with a background of marketing and advertising. The Chair, Moya Hegarty, is rumoured to have a wealth of 89 million euros from the founding of River Dams and is also the owner of production company Tyrone. In general, public service broadcasting is an important feature of society, especially in Ireland where most mainstream media is owned by one man, Dennis O'Brien. Lastly, in recent years, large numbers of people have lost trust in RTE's news reporting. During the Right to Water campaign, opponents of water charges were often not represented on RTE, while Irish water was given substantial airtime. Another example was the trial of protesters from Jobstown, where RTE, together with the rest of the mainstream media, consistently labelled the protesters as violent, while there was no evidence of this whatsoever. The protesters were subsequently found not guilty by a jury. But for RTE to become a genuine public broadcasting body, it needs to make significant changes. It should be free from advertising, reduce salaries of the high-paid presenters and listen to the people. Then, maybe people in Ireland will start paying their TV licence fee. <laughs>